Commissioner, we, we turn to a case study involving Westpac. The first witness in this case study is Mr Bradley Wallace, W-A-L-L-I-S. Mr Wallace, would you prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? Affirmation. you mind standing, please, Mr Wallace? I solemnly and sincerely I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give will be the truth the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth thank you very much Mr Wallace do sit down yes Ms Orr uh, Mr Wallace could you please state your full name Bradley Paul Wallace and Mr Wallace you reside in an ad at an address known to the Commission I do what is your occupation Mr Wallace a centre manager Thank you. And Mr Wallace, have you made a statement to the Royal Commission dated the 22nd of May 2018? I have. I understand that there is an um, amendment that you wish to make to paragraph 10 of that statement. Correct. So that the first sentence of paragraph 10 would read, at the time Tara and I had recently sold... That's correct. ...our own home in Melbourne. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, could I ask you to make and initial that amendment to your statement, please? Yes, yeah, sure. And having made that amendment, I Mr. Have. Mr Wallace, are the contents of your statement true and correct? They are. I tender that statement, Commissioner. And should we have his summons as well? Yes, I was yes. going to proceed to the summons. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes. Exhibit 3.54 will be the statement uh, of uh, Mr Wallace. Uh, Mr Wallace, you've received a summons to attend and give evidence today? I did. Do you have that, uh, that summons there with you? I've just handed it over. I see. I tender that summons, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.55 will be the summons. Now, Mr Wallace, your statement deals with events commencing in late 2015, when you say you and your wife began looking for opportunities to run your own business. Could you please explain what your work history was prior to that time? Uh, when I left school, I travelled for a little while and then uh, joined the New South Wales Police Service. Uh, I worked uh, in various stations uh, for approximately eight years with the police, um, at which point um, I then resigned and joined the Royal Military College. Um, that did, I didn't like that as a career, uh, and so after four months I resigned from there and went back and worked in a civilian life as an operations manager for a scaffolding company. Uh, in 2000, I rejoined the New South Wales Police, and then 9-11 uh, occurred, at which point um, I resigned and joined the, new, the uh, Federal Air Marshal program. I was a Federal Air Marshal for approximately four years. Uh, following that, I resigned uh, late 2004. In January 2005, um, took up a role in Iraq, uh, intended to be a weapons instructor for police academies over there. Uh, I did four tours in Iraq, undertaking various roles over the period of 18 months. And when I returned, I uh, applied for a role with Westfield, now Centre Group, as a facilities manager and was successful in that application. Uh, I then worked for Westfield for a period of 10 years, uh, performing various roles, facilities manager, state facilities manager, uh, then moved across to retail manager and finally centre manager. Do you have any qualifications, Mr Wallace? It, during that period with Westfield, I undertook various studies, um, the first being a retail diploma, followed by a graduate certificate, and then took a year off, 14, 15, and did a Masters in Business Administration. Thank you. And what is your wife's work background, Mr Wallace? Uh, she's marketing specialist uh, and PR. And uh, you have four children, Mr Wallace? Correct. How old are they? Eight, six, five and three. Okay. And you and your wife are sole directors and shareholders of a corporate entity, which is THIR, T-H-I-R, Proprietary Limited? Correct. 
uh, and why did you set that corporate entity up? Uh, as a vehicle to manage our investments. And you and your wife also have a trust, which is the Wallace Family Trust? Correct. Uh, why did you set that up? Again, the same reason. And the, your corporate entity is the trustee of the trust? That's correct. Now, uh, in late 2015, you tell us in your statement, you and your wife started looking for opportunities to uh, run your own business. Why did you do that? Um, well, we'd uh, f thought about owning our own business for a while. We thought it'd give us a bit of freedom and, uh, and allow something for us to both work on together. Uh, and so we started to look at various opportunities. We felt we were um, reasonably experienced and qualified to to have a crack at small business, uh, something, um, and that the age of our children, they weren't too old, so uh, potential relocation wasn't going to be an issue. And where were you living at this time when you started looking for a business opportunity? We were living in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And what was your job at that time? Centre manager. Uh, and where did you want the business to be located? Uh, well, we're hoping for somewhere closer to my parents. And where were your parents? Port Macquarie. Thank you. And in April 2016, did you find a business opportunity? Yes, we did. And what was that business opportunity? Uh, it was a, a cafe and B&B on 20 acres, about 40 minutes west of Port Macquarie. Now, you refer to this in your statement as the Bayabara business That's and property. That's where it was located in Bayabara? That's Bayabara. correct. Uh, and did you and your wife decide that you wanted to purchase the Bayabara business and property? Yes. And did you plan to live at Bayabara? Yes. And did you plan to operate the business, the cafe and bed and breakfast business on the property? We did. Um, did you need a loan to purchase the Bayabara business and property? We did. Uh, and at this time, you say in your statement, you and your wife had sold your family home in Melbourne. Is that right? Correct. Uh, and through your corporate entity, you owned an investment property? Correct. And what sort of property was that? That was a five bedroom home. And where was that located? Port Macquarie. Uh, and was there a mortgage on that property? There was. Uh, with which bank? ANZ. And was this investment property tenanted? Yes. Okay. Now, having decided that you needed a loan to purchase by a barra, did you make a loan application firstly to ANZ? We did. And was that loan approved? No. Uh, why not? Uh, they cited the fact that I was going to be working in Melbourne and owning the business in Port Macquarie. That distance issue uh, was going to have implications. Were you planning to remain working in Melbourne or to move to work on the property? Uh, it was dependent on uh, the logistics, I guess, of, of us owning that property. So there are a number of, a couple of scenarios that we were playing with. Uh, after dealing with ANZ with the first loan application, did you make two further business loan applications, one to NAB and one to the Bank of Melbourne? We did. And I want to ask you some questions about the Bank of Melbourne loan application. Sure. Uh, did you make that application through a broker? Yes, we did. And did the broker say anything to you about what you would have to do with the loan for your um, Port Macquarie investment property? Yes, he said it'll have to come across to Bank of Melbourne. Okay. And did you proceed with an application to the Bank of Melbourne both for the business loan for the buyer Barra property and for the refinancing of the Port Macquarie, Macquarie investment property loan? Uh, I believe so. I, I do recall filling out the application initially for the Biobarra. Yes. And do you recall also filling out an application to refinance the Port Macquarie investment property through the Bank of Melbourne? Uh, maybe not at that same time, but later on. Yes. Now, in relation to the buy a barra loan application, uh, did you and your wife complete a Bank of Melbourne commercial finance application form yes. on behalf of your corporate entity, <coughs> Fur Proprietary Limited? Yes. Uh, and you've annexed a copy of that form to your statement as Exhibit 1, WBC 403 001 ah. Yes.
Perhaps I'll continue with the questions and hopefully the document by which I wanted to um, ask you the questions by reference to will come up on the screen while I'm doing so, Mr Wallace. Do you recall that in that commercial finance application form, uh, you and your wife recorded that you were wanting a loan for $560,000? Correct. Uh, and you indicated in that commercial finance application form that the purpose of the loan was to purchase a 20 hectare property uh, that had a going concern restaurant, a five star B&B, a two bedroom house, a two room studio, an 11 metre heated pool, a ride on lawnmower and an 18 gigalitre irrigation licence. Do you recall explaining all of that as the purpose of the loan? Yes, 20 acre property. 20 acre, thank you. Yes. Uh, and we don't have the document on the screen yet, but uh, the document indicates that you and your wife completed it and dated it on the 30th of April 2016. Correct. Now, you and your wife um, also, on behalf of Thur, completed a business finance consent form, which you've annexed to your statement as Exhibit 2. Yes. And you can see from the um, version of that document you have, uh, the um, doc ID is WBC 4030011550. Um, you can see that that was another document that you and your wife signed and dated on the 30th of April 2016. Yes. And these forms were submitted to the Bank of Melbourne by your broker? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. we have that. Now, could, could we just go, if we're able to go back to the first document, that is the one that I would like to display on the screen. Uh, but if that's not possible, I'll <coughs> move on. The first document was WBC Now, this is your commercial finance application form. And could I just ask that the second page of that document, 0990, uh, so that the Commissioner uh, can see this, we see that you have ticked commercial loan at the top of the page, uh, an amount of $560,000. And we see the reference at the bottom of the page to the purpose of the loan, which I read to you earlier. So if we could have that taken off the screen and you see the reference to the purpose there at the bottom of the page. So this is the commercial finance application form that your broker submitted on your behalf, is that right? Correct. Now, after these forms were submitted, uh, did the Bank of Melbourne assign you a dedicated business banker? They did. And who was that? Arthur Athanasopoulos. Thank you. Did you ever meet Mr Athanasopoulos? No, not in person. And how did you communicate with him? Uh, mostly via email and the odd phone call. And did Mr Athanasopoulos ever visit the Bayabara property? No. Did he ask you questions about the business you were planning to run from the Bayabara property? No. Did you provide Mr Athanasopoulos and the broker with copies of the land and business sale agreements for the property? Yes. And what was the price for the land under the contract of sale? 645000 And what was the price for the business under the business sale agreement? 30000 And the loan amount that you sought was $560,000. How did you intend to fund the remainder of the price of the property and the business? Uh, from savings and borrowings from my parents. Thank you. Could I ask that you be shown WBC 4030011494? That document's not in your statement, um, 
Mr Wallace, but hopefully it will be able to be brought up on the screen relatively quickly. Do you recognise this document, which is an Excel spreadsheet, uh, Mr Wallace? Yep. Uh, now, is this a document that went to the bank as part of your loan application process? Yes. And does it contain a projected profit and loss for the business? Yes, it does. And who created this document? I did. Thank you. I tender that document, Commissioner. It will be Exhibit 3.56, Excel Spreadsheet Profit and Loss, WBC 4030011494. Uh, uh, Mr Wallace, having signed the documentation uh, on the 30th of April 2016, at the start of June, did you get an email from Mr Athanasopoulos telling you that the buyer barra loan application and the application to <laughs> refinance the Port Macquarie investment property had been approved? Yes. And you've exhibited that email as Exhibit 3 to your statement, which is uh, RCD 0024004 Yes. You have that document in front of you uh, as Exhibit 3, Mr yes, Wallace, and you can see that on the second page, Mr Athanasopoulos um, communicates to you that your facility for your refinance and purchase has been unconditionally approved and docks have been ordered, expected in the next 24 hours. Yes. Um, <clears throat> after you got this email, did you receive documents from the Bank of Melbourne that you had to sign to finalise the loans? Yes, we did. And were they loan agreements, guarantees, indemnities and mortgage documents? They were. Did you read through those documents? Yes. Now, you've annexed the loan agreement for Buyer Barra as Exhibit 4 to your statement. That's WBC 4030069. Now we see there Mr Wallace, that although you had submitted a commercial finance application and been dealing with a business banker, the loan offer that went to you was a residential loan agreement offer, is that right? That's correct. And if we turn to 0073, we see that the offer that was made to you was an offer to lend your corporate entity $516,000. Correct. So this was less than the 560 that you had sought? Yep. And were you able to make up the shortfall? Uh, yes. How did you make up the shortfall? We borrowed from my parents. Okay. And we also see on this page that the loan was secured by the buyer bower property. Is that right? That's correct. And further down the page, we see that both you and your wife provided guarantees and indemnities. That's correct. And if we go back to 0070, we see towards the top of the page that this was an interest only loan for the first three years of the 30 year term. Is that right? Correct. Um, now, by the time that you had the buyer bar loan approved by the Bank of Melbourne, you had also received conditional approval from NAB under your other business loan application, is that correct? That's correct. But the NAB approval was for a lower amount. That's correct. Do you recall what that amount was? 492500 And you say in your statement at paragraph 20 that you were a little surprised that the Bank of Melbourne was going to provide us with a residential loan for the buyer barra property in the amount of $516,000 as we had recently 
um, obtain con conditional approval through a different, I'm sorry, I may be misreading that, let me just make sure I get that right. Um, you had recently obtained, you had recently received conditional approval through a different broker from the National Australia Bank for a maximum loan amount of $492,000. Correct. So you had noticed that the loan that the Bank of Melbourne was providing you was a residential loan rather than a business loan? I did. And you say in your statement that you thought this must be the best loan product that the Bank of Melbourne could offer you to secure finance to purchase the buyer bower property? Correct. You and your wife signed the loan documentation from the Bank of Melbourne? We did. Uh, and you proceeded to draw down the loan and purchase the buyer bower business and property? Correct. Did you and your family relocate to the buyer bower property in the following months? Yes. And did you do some renovations on the property? Yes. Uh, to the cafe and the bed and breakfast? Yes. How long did they take? Three months in the end. And did you then reopen the business in around September 2016? Yes. And when you reopened, did you reopen both the cafe and the bed and breakfast? Yes. And what role did your wife play in the business? Um, she was general manager. And what role did you play in the business? Uh, various roles, from dishwasher to maintenance man to accountant to... Uh, house husband. Yeah. And, and how did the business perform initially? Initially it started off well. Uh, and did the business then start to struggle financially? Yes, it did. Uh, and how long after you reopened did the business start to struggle? Uh, probably five to six weeks. And could you explain what happened? So we opened in the school holidays uh, and we had um, good visitation throughout that period. Uh, obviously we were um, the new establishment in the area and so there was a novelty factor. There always is when a new business opens. We peaked and then um, and then stabilised and that stabilisation um, we soon realised uh, probably wasn't enough to sustain profitability in the current model that we opened with. Mm -hmm. uh, did you need to reduce the hours of your um, operations? Yes, we did. Okay. And did you continue to service the buyer bower loan uh, with the Bank of Melbourne through the financial difficulties? Yes, we did. And how did you do that? Uh, well, we had some capital reserves. Uh, we financed uh, payments from income generated from the restaurant in that initial period. Did you need to borrow any money from... Eventually, yes. Yes. And who did you borrow that money from? Uh, both of our parents. Yes. Now, around this time, did you work out that the Bank of Melbourne had not applied a discount to the interest rate on the buyer bower loan that your broker had negotiated when the loan was approved? Yes. And how much excess interest had you paid? About $5,200, I think it was. And did you ask the bank um, to refund the excess interest payments? Yes. And did the bank agree to do that? Initially, no. Initially, they said you need to provide evidence that um, we committed the 1% discount, uh, to which I couldn't find. So I went back to our broker and asked him to, to find that evidence. He's the one who negotiated the deal. Uh, it took some time, but he, he managed to extract the email from archives and forwarded that to the bank. And after this, did the bank agree to refund the excess interest? Yes, and backdate it. And you asked for the excess interest to be paid into your cash account to assist with cash flow for the business? Well, we saw it reasonable that we'd made cash payments, surplus cash payments. We wanted that money back, yeah. Uh, cash flow was very important to us at the time. And did the bank instead reverse the funds into payment of principal off the loan? That's right. Um, which at that time was an interest only loan. That's right. Uh, and that meant you couldn't access that money? Uh, that's correct. So initially they said fill out some redraw forms and then they said, oh, uh, actually no, because it's gone on to the principal, you can't redraw that. And did you complain to the bank about that? Yes. Uh, and did you then complain to FOS about that? That's correct. And after you complained to FOS, did the bank agree to transfer the excess interest across into your 
um, cash account? They did. Okay. Um, now, after that occurred, did the business continue to struggle? Yes. And was there a point at which you decided that it was no longer viable for you and your wife to operate the business? Yes. Uh, when did you reach that view? Uh, sort of March, April from memory. Mm -hmm. March, 2017. April last year? Yep. And why did you reach that view? Uh, well, a number of other things had happened with the business. We lost uh, a couple of chefs. Um, we were a destination. We were remote. We were in the hinterland. Um, so uh, finding a replacement chef that wanted to travel was difficult. Uh, we still had to open the doors. Uh, and um, due to that inability to find a chef, my wife had to go into the kitchen. Um, she's not a trained commercial cook or chef in any way, uh, and that uh, had huge implications to us. Did you decide to try and sell the business? Yes. Uh, and in April that year, last year, uh, approximately eight months after you reopened the business, did you enter into a contract to sell the business? We did. And did the sale proceed? Yes. And in May last year, did you lease the property uh, for a term of two years? We did. And where did you and your family go at that time? Uh, during that time, I applied for a role, the role I'm currently in, and was successful, and that was in the Gold Coast. And so we relocated to the Gold Coast. Uh, and uh, where did you live on the Gold Coast? Initially, we uh, lived in various locations. We had to. Uh, we found it quite difficult to find uh, a rental. It was a very competitive market, especially rental for a family of six, um, and so we had to Airbnb. Uh, in June last year, did you ask the bank to revalue both of your properties? We did. And was that because at that time uh, 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 you had not sold the Byabara property or the Port Macquarie investment property? No, we hadn't. Uh, and you've annexed an email containing um, your request to the bank to revalue both of those properties as Exhibit 6, WBC 4030071206. Yes. You have that document in front of you and you can see that you sent that email to Mr Miller, a Bank of Melbourne business banking manager. Correct. And had he taken over from Mr Thanasopoulos? Yes. And we see there that he told you that he would arrange the valuations of the two properties. Correct. Why did you want the two properties revalued? Well, the difficulties we were facing finding a rental, we thought, well, just buy. And so we wanted to know what equity we had in the properties. Uh, we'd borrow on that equity and um, purchase a place. To purchase a home on the Gold Coast. That's correct. Is that right? And did the bank subsequently inform you that because the Byabara property was both a residential and a commercial property, and the bank only paid for residential valuations, you would need to engage a commercial valuer at your own cost? Correct. You've annexed some emails that you exchanged with the bank about this as exhibits seven and eight to your statement. Um, the bank told you uh, in those emails that the price range for a commercial valuation was $1,000 plus? That's right. And did you proceed with the valuation of the buyer Barra property? No, we didn't. Why not? Well, it was a lot of money. Yeah. And later that month, uh, did, you, did you decide with your wife to sell the investment property at Port Macquarie? Yes, we did. Why did you decide to sell that property? Uh, to free up some capital. Yes. And you signed a contract of sale in September last year? That's correct. And how much did you agree to sell the Port Macquarie property for? 760000 And would that amount have fully discharged the mortgage that the Bank of Melbourne had over that property? More so, yes. So it would have resulted in surplus proceeds of sale correct. after the mortgage was discharged? Correct. And you sent a request to the bank to discharge the mortgage on the investment property? Yes. And what happened after you sent that request? Uh, they came back to us and essentially said, um, we'll arrange the discharge. Uh, however, we'll also need to uh, 
change the loan facility of your remaining asset, the buyer of Arrow? <coughs> Did they explain why they needed to change the loan facility for buyer Barra? Uh, because it, they deemed it to be a commercial operation. You say in your statement that you had a telephone call with Mr Damien Brander from the bank. Can you deal with this in paragraph 34 of your statement? Um, you say that during this call, Mr Brander told you that the Bank of Melbourne would only agree to discharge the mortgage over the investment property, this is the Port Macquarie property, on the condition that the Bank of Melbourne hold an additional $100,000 of the sale proceeds in a term deposit pending the restructure of the buyer bar loan from a residential loan to a commercial facility. Is that right? Correct. So did you understand that it was a condition imposed by the bank of its release of its mortgage over your investment property that you and your wife agree to set up a term deposit into which $100,000 of the surplus proceeds of sale would be held? Correct. And did you understand that you would be permitted to access the $100,000 held in that term deposit? No, we could not. Uh, and did you also understand that it was a condition imposed by the bank of the release of the mortgage over the investment property that you and your wife agreed to restructure the loan over by a barra to a commercial facility? Correct. And what did you think about the bank imposing these conditions on the discharge of the mortgage over the Port Macquarie property? Uh, it was unjust. Um, we felt that we were being held for ransom, essentially, to agree to that, to have that discharge of our investment property mortgage. Did you exchange a series of emails with Mr Brander and Mr Miller at the bank about their condition that they'd only discharge the mortgage on this basis? Yes. And you've exhibited those emails as Exhibit 9 to your statement. If we could go to that, WBC 4030640064. And if we could start with the email at 4067, we see, and I'm sorry, the printing is very small. Um, I want to go to the email at the bottom of the page to you. Uh, from Damien Brander on the 28th of September 2017. We see there a reference by Mr Brander in the third paragraph down to your telephone conversation. To confirm what we discussed yesterday for you, I have commitment from our state credit officer to approve the sale discharge request which we will look to complete next Friday, the 6th of October, on the condition that we hold 100,000 of the sale proceeds in a term deposit, we will release the term deposit when the new business loans are in place to correctly secure the bank's post-settlement position. As advised on the phone with you yesterday afternoon, this will occur when the valuation has been completed and returned and you have fully signed and executed the new business loan contracts. The $100,000 term deposit is required as at the current value of the commercial property we hold, being the purchase price from 2016, there is a $100,000 shortfall in security held for the bank. When the new valuation comes back, we anticipate that the bank will be have a fully secured position and release the money back to you. So that was the email you received from Mr Brander on this date? Correct. You responded in an email higher up on the page on the 19th of October and in the second paragraph of your response you said to Mr Brander, additionally you said to me in our phone call that BOM, Bank of Melbourne, has a legal right to undertake this process based on a clause in the loan contract. Can you please advise which clause this is and also forward a copy of the executed contract so we can validate this? Now, if we turn to 4066, we see that at the bottom of that page, later that day, uh, Mr Brander said that he would provide you with a copy of the contract, the terms and conditions of the loan, 
That's the memorandum right. of credit and a copy of the mortgage, hopefully tomorrow, but it may be Monday, given the length of time it takes me to retrieve them. And further up that page, we see that a week later, you had not received <coughs> these documents from right. Mr Brander. You emailed him on the 26th of October, pointing out that you were yet to receive the loan documents referencing the relevant clause as to how Bank of Melbourne has a legal right to withhold $100,000 in proceeds from the settlement of the Oxley Highway, that's the Port Macquarie property, as security for our other mortgage in Byabarra. Although you have pressured us into completing documents providing authority to take this action, we felt we must do this, otherwise Bank of Melbourne would not process the settlement of the Port Macquarie property. We have reviewed some of the loan documents we have on hand and cannot find any reference giving Bank of Melbourne authority to do this. Additionally, neither property is referenced as security for the other in said loan docs, and as such we fail to see how they are linked allowing you the authority to quarantine our money. We formally request that Bank of Melbourne release our $100,000 immediately or provide the legal documentation that gives you authority to withhold it. I require an answer to this on this date or we'll be taking the matter to the Ombudsman. And if we turn to 4065, we see that later that day, um, Mr Brander provided you with loan documentation in the email that appears on the second half of that page, provided you with six loan documents and said to you that the particular document that relates to the bank's ability to control the flow of any settlement funds in relation to the discharging or partial discharging of securities is the Bank of Melbourne Memorandum of Provisions. And he pointed out particular pages and clauses um, but said it was not limited there might be other relevant sections of the agreement terms. And you emailed uh, Mr Brander back later that day at the top of this page. You told him that you'd read the documents and it didn't make any reference to any other mortgage or debt other than that for the given property. You said you failed to see where this applies to another independent mortgage and feel you are still withholding monies without legal authority. We have completely discharged the loan associated with this property. The only property referenced as security against this loan was the Port Macquarie property, no other reference to our other property. And you repeat your request for the $100,000 to be released. Correct. And finally, if we turn to 4064, we see um, in the second email on that page that Mr Brander emailed you back on the 26th of October uh, I'm not sure why we've enlarged that bit. The email is just above it. And Mr Brander said to you, as previously advised in my phone conversations and via email, the bank will not be in a position to release the $100,000 term deposit until the existing residual loan is restructured as a business loan due to it now solely being secured by a commercial property and that there is a shortfall of security based on the existing valuation figure. Now, just pausing there, the property was secured at this time by the same property that had always secured it. That's Is that correct. right? Yep. All right. Um, and you responded to this email in the email at the top of the page. You thanked Mr Brander for explaining the position. And you said, two points I reiterate that make us disagree with the legal grounds of such a decision, which we feel has been determined by your interpretation. One, the property usage has not changed since we purchased it. It was always a residence and still is with an adjoining business. Bank of Melbourne agreed to residential loan and we don't see why that has changed. Two, the two loans are completely independent of each other and make no reference to each other in any loan documentation. On these grounds, we will continue to proceed with a submission to the Ombudsman seeking release of all monies you have forcefully quarantined. That's the email that you sent in that exchange with Mr Brander? Correct. And in October 2017, <coughs> uh, later this same month, did you lodge a complaint about the bank's conduct with FOS? Yes, I did. And in January this year, before <coughs> FOS had made any recommendation or determination, 
did you enter into a contract to sell the Biobara property and business? Yes, we did. You said earlier that you had entered into a contract earlier, but that contract uh, fell over. Is it that did. correct? That's correct. And following the sale of Biobara, um, did the Bank of Melbourne agree to release your term deposit? They did. And did that occur in February of this year? That's correct. And after that time, did FOS make a recommendation in relation to your complaint? They did. And in this recommendation, did FOS find that the bank had incorrectly advanced the loan over the buyer Barra property as a residential loan instead of a commercial loan? Correct. And did FOS find that although the Bank of Melbourne was entitled under the terms of the loan documents to retain part of the sale proceeds of your investment property, it was not fair for the bank to act in that way? Correct. And did FOS require the Bank of Melbourne to compensate you for non-financial <laughs> loss they in did. the amount of $2,000? They did. And did you accept that recommendation? Yes. And did the Bank of Melbourne accept that recommendation? Yes, they did. No further questions, Commissioner. Yes, Mr. Dark. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Mr. Wallace, my name's Matthew Dark. I'm a barrister for Westpac. I just want to ask you a few short questions. Sure. Um, Commissioner, could I ask that document WBC.403.002.0006 be brought up on the screen? I have two paper copies, if that would assist. Mr. Musco, on a rise somewhere, Mr. Dark, I thought that uh, notice was ordinarily given to the solicitors for the commission of what documents you wanted access to. Yes, this is in Has the... Has it not been done this time? No, no, it has. As I understand it, this is a document that council assisting has identified to be tendered in relation to this case yes. study. So we understood it had been uploaded. Yes. There it is. Uh, it's up on the screen now. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, Mr Wallace, um, do you see this as a document headed home loan? Yes. A and could I ask that we go through to page 0008? And do you see there um, a section of the document um, filling out certain personal details concerning yourself? Yes. I is that your handwriting on that page? Yes, it is. Um, and just to give you a little more context, over the page, 0009, another section, this one dealing with um, some details concerning your wife. Do you see that? That's correct. And then if we go through to the last page, which is 0023, you see that Signatures are blanked out, uh, but your name and your wife's name appear at the end. Do you recall just having been taken to those pages that this is another document that uh, you prepared and provided to the Bank of Melbourne in connection with your application for a loan in relation to the purchase of the Biobarra property? Yes. Thank you. Your Honour, uh, Commissioner, I tender that document. What should I describe it as? Uh, it should be described as home loan application document dated 6 June 2016. Home loan application document 6 June 16. WBC 403 002 0006 will be exhibit 3.57. May I please the commission? There are no further questions. Yes, thank you. Commissioner, I do have some questions arising from that document. I can be very brief. Yes, please. While that document is still on the screen, uh, uh, Mr Wallace, uh, can I ask that you be shown 0006 of that document? Uh, 
Uh, we see there, Mr Wallace, that you have ticked as the loan purpose by business. Correct. Correct. And could I also take you to 0014? And can I take you to what is written in handwriting, your handwriting, as I understand it, towards the bottom of the page next to expenses? Have you written there, captured in business operations, refer P&L provided? Yes. And was that a reference to the profit and loss, the prospective profit and loss statement uh, that I took you to earlier? That's correct. In relation to the business that you were planning to operate from this property? Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr Wallace. Thank you very much uh, for your evidence. Uh, you may step down and you're excused. Uh, where do we go to tomorrow? Uh, all? We'll continue with this case study and the first witness tomorrow will be Mr Alistair Welsh again from Westpac. At 09.45 tomorrow. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner.